Chapter 91 of the Plum in the Golden Vase Chongzhen Edition of Embroidered Portraits. Meng Yulu loves to marry Li Yane. And Li Yane angrily beats the hairpin, poem says. The mat spreads out the Xiang pattern. And the waves are about to be born, but the dream is difficult to come true. Leaning on the bed adds flavor to the remaining sleep. And I am shy about opening an account and waiting for the moon to shine. It's like a beautiful bee as a medium to convey secret thoughts. But it's hard to separate the love from the firefly. I feel pity for the weaver girl from afar. And her good days are approaching. And I can see how the Milky Way is bending and crossing. One day, Chen Jingji heard Mrs. Zhu saying that she knew about Sun Zue. Taking advantage of this reason, Chen Jingji made Mrs. Zhu go to Simon King's house to tell Yun Yang. Sister in Lazu had no choice but to see Yun Yang and said, Uncle Chen made a speech outside, saying that he did not want eldest sister and wanted to write a petition. There was a notice at the governor's office saying that my father was in Japan and kept many gold and silver boxes and soft things that his father had left. This year, Yun Yang came because Sun Zue was stolen and kidnapped by Lai Wang'er, and Lai Anaras young boy left. The three family members, Lake Sing's daughter-in-law who was Yu, died again and had just been sent away. Things were going on at home. When I heard what Zhu's sister-in-law said, I was so frightened that I quickly hired a sedan chair and sent her to my eldest sister's house. However, the eldest sister's bed, box, kitchen and dowry were handed over to Diane to hire people to carry them to Chen Jingji's house. Jingji said, This is the bed dowry he took with him to marry me, as well as the soft gold and silver boxes and cages that I kept at home. I must ask for them back. Sister-in-law Zhu said, your mother-in-law said that when my father-in-law was here, he stopped collecting them. I haven't seen you with this dowry. Jingji asked for his maid Yuang Shuair again. Zhu Sauer and Diana came to say to Yun Yang. Yun Yang refused to give the Yuang Shao to him and said, This girl is the envoy in Li Jiao's room. Now I keep it to see my brother every night. She sent Zhang Qiu away and said, I bought it to serve the eldest sister. This Jingji doesn't want Zhang Qiu. He only teaches Zhu to walk back and forth. His mother, Mrs. Zhang, said to Diane, Brother, you come home and pay homage to your aunt. There are many sisters in your family, so you don't care about this maid to guard your brother. Since you have always been in the room with the eldest sister, your brother-in-law has already used it. Why is your aunt just staying here after leaving him? Diane said this to Yun Yang when he got home. Yun Yang had nothing to say, so she had to send Yuang Shuair away. Jingji accepted it, full of joy. And said, why do you want to come here? It was exactly, spare you for being so treacherous as a ghost and eat my foot washing water. Press one end. Speaking of Li Yane, the son of Lizi County, he saw Wu Yunyang and Meng Yulu in the suburbs of the King Ming Dynasty. They were dressed in the same way, and they were both beautiful. He knew that they were Simon King's wife and child. There is a heart in the Yemen. And she loves Meng Yulu Sheng's long figure, melon seed skin and charming and pretty appearance. It turns out that Yemeni has been widowed for a long time and has been seeking marriage from matchmakers everywhere, but to no avail. When I saw the Jade Tower, I felt attracted to it, but there was no way to get in. I didn't know whether to marry or not, and how to obey. Unexpectedly, so it was destined to be an official. It was known that she came from Simon King's family. She went through many twists and turns before Yi's father's case. Each criminal was put on trial to find out the amount of stolen goods and hope that he would come and collect it. Yun Yang is afraid and won't let anyone see her. The Yemen were disappointed, so they took the stolen goods into the official office and sold them to the official Zue. As a result, the Yemen plotted against the gallery official Hebu Wai, who sent the official matchmaker Tao Mama to Simon King's home to visit and ask for a marriage. The marriage was promised and the county government would be exempted from having to marry him. And he would also be rewarded with five tails of silver. After hearing this, Tao's mother was so fond of it that she ran as fast as flying. One day, she arrived at the head of Simon King Men. Lei Zhao was standing at the door when he saw Tao's mother saying blessings and saying, Ask the housekeeper, Is this Simon's father's house? Lai Zhao said, Where are you from? My father has passed away. What do you have to say? Tao's mother said, the housekeeper came in to report. I am the official matchmaker of this county. My name is Tao's mother. According to the words of the young father in the office, 
I have told you that a grandma in our house is going to get married. Respectfully, come and get married. Nale Zhao shouted. You are so unreasonable. My father has been dead for more than a year, and only two of my grandmothers have been widowed. As the saying goes, widows are not allowed to marry. You are a matchmaker. Are you going to mess around with me? If you don't leave quickly, you will offend grandma. She will give you a good beating. Na Dao's mother laughed and said, Brother Guan, as the saying goes, officials are at odds with each other. It's not a bad person. If you don't want me, how dare I come? Do you want to marry me? Go in and tell me so that I can reply. Lai Zhao said, It's convenient for others and for your own convenience. Please stay a little longer. Wait for me to come in. There are two grandmothers. One has a brother and the other has no brother. I wonder which one is getting married. Come here. It's the grandma with some white pock marks on her face. After hearing this, Lei Zhao walked to the back and told Yun Yang, the county sent an official matchmaker outside. Yun Yang was surprised and said, My family didn't say a word. How do outsiders know? Lai Zhao said, I once saw him in the suburbs on the Qingming festival and said he had a few white pock marks on his face. Yun Yang then said, Maybe third sister Meng also said, Touching people's hearts. Suddenly La Bao wants to move forward and marry? It's just that the water in the world knows the depth, but the human heart can't fathom it. As he walked to the Jade building and sat down, he asked, Meng Sanyang, I have something to ask you. There is a Baoshan matchmaker outside who said that he was in a small government office in the county. He met you once on the Qingming festival and said that you were going to go there. Move forward. Did you say this? The judge heard that it was a coincidence that the marriage had been linked since ancient times. That day in the suburbs, Meng Yilu saw a man born in the government office. He was a romantic and romantic man. The two families looked alike in age, and they knew how to move around. Wield a bow and arrows. They were interested in each other. And it was obvious that they were interested in each other. But he didn't know whether he had a wife or not. He said nothing in his mouth, but secretly thought in his heart, the man is dead, and the slave has nowhere to go. Although the ant has a child, tomorrow will grow up, and each child will feel pain. I am a tree in the dark. There is no cloud, and I am fetching water from a bamboo basket. Seeing that Yun Yang has a filial brother, her heart has changed. She is not like before. I might as well go forward and find the place where the fallen leaves return to their roots, and just stay there stupidly. What? The youth of being a slave is gone. In the midst of longing, I didn't expect Yun Yang to come in and say this. It was the person I saw outside the King Ming festival. She felt happy and ashamed at the same time, but she said, Andy, please don't listen to people's nonsense. I didn't say that. She suddenly blushed. Exactly. He spoke shyly to everyone, combing his temples without saying anything, but nodding his head. Yun Yang said, This is everyone's personal matter, and I can't control much of it. She called Lei Zhao, please invite Baoshan to come in. When Lei Zhao came to the door, he called Tao's mother, and when he went in, he saw Yun Yang at the back. After observing the etiquette, sit down, the little maid poured tea and ate it. Yun Yang asked, what's the matter when you come to Baoshan? Tao's mother said, my little daughter-in-law, who has nothing to do, goes to the San Bao Hall and pays a share in the county's main house. She said that there is a grandma in your house who wants to get married. Let's talk about it. It's a marriage. Yun Yang said, It's not known that this lady in my family is getting married. How can your Yaman know about it? Tao's mother said, My Yaman said that I saw this in person on the King Ming festival. She is a lady with a long figure, melon seed skin, and a few sparse white pock marks on her face. She is this grandma. When Yun Yang heard this, it goes without saying that she is third sister Mang. So he led Tao's mother to the bride room in the Jade building and sat down. After waiting for a long time, Yulu dressed up and came out. Tao's mother wished her all the best and said, This is the grandma who is indeed true to her words. She has outstanding talents and is unrivaled in the world. She can be a real wife with my father and Yane. Yulu smiled and said, Mom, don't talk nonsense. How old are you in the office? Is there anyone in the house who has an official status? To tell the truth, don't lie. Oh my god, my wife is an official matchmaker in this county. And she is not as quick to lie as any other matchmaker. I am not lying. My county magistrate father is in his 50s. 
and he only gave birth to a father in Yane. This year he is born in the year of the horse. 31 years old, Jian Chang was born on the 23rd day of the first lunar month. Soon he was promoted to the imperial examination, and soon became a scholar. There is only one maid in the house who is married, and she is not outstanding. I want to find a wife to head the house. If this marriage is done in our house, my father said, the appearance will be ruined, and the land and food for the tomb will be ruined. If someone bullies you, he will be brought to the county and beaten at will. Yulu said, do you have any children in the office? Where are you from? My servants are all here. Why don't you go with him? Tao's mother said, I have no children and no flowers around me. I am originally from Zhaoqiang County, Zhending Prefecture, Beijing. I have passed away. The Yellow River is no more than six or seven hundred miles away. There are many fields in his home, and there are crowds of mules and horses, and there are countless people. And the horse arches are decorated with clear inscriptions, and the holy decrees are on them. Now that he has married a wife, he has become the first wife. When he gets an official position, his wife will have the official title of five flowers, ride in the Chixiang car, and be the wife of the Ming dynasty. What's wrong with that? Meng Yulu was told by Tao's mother that she was absolutely convinced. She called Leng Shang to put it on the table and looked at it. E.T. Snacks and snacks with Bao Shen. Because he said, Bao Shen, don't blame me for interrogating you. You are a matchmaker who lies so much that slaves are afraid of eating people. Tao's mother said, Good grandma, just compare one with the other. The pure will be pure and the mud will be muddy. The good thing is the bad thing. My little wife does not lie. She only acts as a matchmaker according to her duty. If grandma is willing, write a wedding invitation to me so that I can tell my little daddy. Yulu made a big red joke. He asked Dan to write the horoscope of his birth date to the clerk Fu in the shop. Wu Yunyang then said, You were originally the matchmaker Zhu's sister-in-law told you to do. And now you have asked the young man to call Zhu's sister-in-law to come. The two of them took the post together and said that this is the marriage. It is only polite. After a while, the messenger Danner called sister-in-law Zhu to come and said hello to Mother Tao. When he saw the right person, he took the post and left Simon King's house and went to the county to go back to the Yemeni. One is the ice man here, and the other is Baoshan over there, with two mouths of 48 teeth. It is said that Chang'e is looking for her spouse in the moon, and the Wushan goddess marries King Xiang. Mother Tao asked sister-in-law Zhu on the road, are you the original matchmaker for this lady? Sister-in-law Zhu said, that's right. Mother Tao asked him, whose daughter did you originally marry here? Whose daughter did you marry here? Daughter, are you remarried? Sister-in-law Zhu then told Simon King exactly what he had said when he married her from the young family. When he saw the wedding notice that said, the girl is expected to be 37 years old. She will be born on November 27, she said. I'm afraid the Yemen thinks she's too old. What's the matter? He's only 31 now, so he's older, six years old. Sister-in-law Zhu said, let's take this wedding gift and pay it to a passing gentleman. If it's not right, I won't tell him how old he is. It won't be a lie. As the two of them walked over, they no longer saw the fortune teller who passed by with the clappers. Instead, they saw a fortune-telling shop far to the south of the road. There was a green curtain with two lines of large characters hanging on it. Seeping predicts nobility and inferiority, and an iron pen determines prosperity and decline. Someone comes to tell fortunes, and he speaks frankly without mercy. There was a table under the curtain, and inside sat a fortune-teller who was good at writing and calculating. The two matchmakers bowed, and the fortune-teller asked them to sit down. Mrs. Su said, there is a woman who needs your fortune-telling. She took out three cents of fortune-telling gold from her sleeve and said, don't look down on it. Please take it for the time being. I didn't bring extra money when I was passing by. The fortune-teller said, please tell me your birth date. Mother Tao handed him the marriage invitation, which had the birth date and age. The fortune-teller said, this is a match. He pinched his fingers to find the lines, shook the fortune-teller, and said, this woman is 37 years old this year, born on November 27th at midnight. In the Jiazi month, Xin Mao Day, and Zheng Zi hour, she is a seal-shaped person. The woman's fortune is retrograde, and she is in the Bingxian period, born with Bing and Xin. 
She will have great authority in the future and will be in charge of the fate of the wife of the main hall. Although there are many husband stars in the four pillars, it is a fortune which will benefit the husband and make her blessed. She will be loved by the husband. In the past two years, she will definitely be defeated. Have you seen it? Mrs. Sue said, it has defeated two husbands. The master said, if you have seen it, it will be better later. Mrs. Sue said, did he have a son in the future? The master said, it was too early. He didn't have a son until he was 41 years old. He had a good life and was extremely rich and prosperous. He took a pen and wrote for sentences of fate. The charming figure does not lose the Jiang Mai style. Three red silks into painted eyebrows. You will see the horse head rising in the sun and take off the yin skin and move at will. Mrs. Zhu asked, Sir, what does seeing the horse head rising up in the sun, taking off the tiger skin and moving at will mean? I don't understand these two sentences, please explain it to me. The gentleman said, the horse head means that if this lady marries a husband born in the year of the horse, she will be a noble star and enjoy glory. The tiger's skin means a husband who has been defeated and is born in the year of the tiger. Although she is favored, she is only a concubine. She will have a long career and fame until she is 68 years old, have a son, die of old age, and live together forever. The two matchmakers said, if she marries a man born in the year of the horse, I'm afraid he is several years older and not a good match. Please change it to two years younger. The gentleman said, since you want to change it, change it to Ding Mao and 34 years old. Mrs. Su said, is 34 years old suitable for a man born in the year of the horse? The gentleman said, Ding fire and Zheng metal, fire meets metal. And it will definitely become a great man, which is just right. He changed it to 34 years old. The two bid farewell to the gentleman, left the gua shop, and went straight to the county. When the doorman came in, the yeman called in the matchmakers, Tao and Su, and they kotoed. The yeman asked, Where is that woman from? Mother Tao said, The matchmaker over there. She told him about the marriage and said, The lady is extremely talented, but she is a little older. I dare not act on my own but I have asked for a marriage invitation in accordance with the wishes of the Yemen's father. Then she handed it over. Li Yane looked at it and saw that it said 34 years old, born at midnight on November 27th. He said, it doesn't matter if she is three or two years older. Su Sauer interrupted and said, Dad, you are right. It has been said since ancient times that a wife two years older than you is worth more gold. A wife three years older than you is worth more gold. This woman is outstanding and gentle. She is a master of the family and knows how to manage the family. It goes without saying. Yane said, I have seen her. There is no need to see her again. Just choose an auspicious day and a good time to have tea and go there. The two matchmakers reported. When will the young wife come to serve? Yane said, it won't be delayed. You two can come to ask for it tomorrow and go to his house. Each of them was rewarded with one or two tails of silver as a gift. The two matchmakers went out happily. It goes without saying. Li Yane was overjoyed to see that the marriage was settled. He called the corridor official He Bu Wai to discuss it and told his father, Li Shixian. He ordered Yin Yangsheng to choose the 8th day of April for the ceremony and to marry the woman on the 15th day. He then exchanged the silver and entrusted He Bu Wai and Xiao Zhangshan to buy tea, wine and gifts. There is no need to go into details. The two matchmakers discussed the date the next day and went to Simon King's house to report to Yu Nying and Yu Lu. It is just like this. Marriage is destined in the previous life. And Jade was planted in Lanshan. On the eighth day of April, the county prepared 16 plates of soup, fruit, tea and cakes, a pair of gold silk crowns, a pair of gold headdresses, an agate belt, a pair of Ding Dang Seven Things, gold bracelets and silver bracelets, to red palace brocade robes, for sets of embroidered clothes, 30 tails of gift money, and the rest of the cloth, silk, and cotton, a total of more than 20 loads. The two matchmakers followed, and the corridor clerk He Bu Wai carried the load to Simon King's house to order tea. On the 15th day, the county sent many fast-handed idlers, to carry Meng Yulu's bed curtains and dowry boxes. Yu Nying watched, but all the things in his room were given to him to take away. When Simon King was alive, he gave his eight-step painted bed to his elder sister. So Yu Nying gave him the mother of pearl bed in Pan Jinlian's room. Yulu asked Lang Shang to go with him. 
leaving Shallowen and Yu Nying to look after Jir. Yu Nying refused, saying, How can I leave you, the maid in your room? After all, Jir has John Kyur, Chu Chen and Nair, who are also seduced. Yu Lu only left a pair of silver Hui Wee pots for Jir to play with, and took the rest with her. In the evening, a four-person sedan chair for pairs of red gauze lanterns and eight policemen came to marry. Yulu wore a golden crown, a head full of pearls and jade, and a red robe with sleeves. She first bowed to Simon King's spirit tablet, and then to Yu Nying. Yu Nying said, Meng Sanji, you are so cruel. You are leaving me alone. Who will accompany me? The two held hands and cried for a while. Then everyone in the family saw her out the door. The matchmaker put on a red silk cloth and held a golden vase. Yu Nying was a widow and could not go out, so she asked her aunt to escort the bride to the county magistrate's office. People on the street saw her and said, This is the third wife of Zyman Dogwanren, who married the son of the county magistrate. Today is an auspicious day and a good time to marry her. Some said good things, while others said bad things. Those who said good things said that Zyman Dogwanren was a good person in the past, but he died today. Only his first wife was a decent widow and had a son. There were so many people in the room, so they all went forward. And there were even some who were in charge. Some people were gossiping and talking about Simon King, pointing and saying, Simon King's concubine is now married. When he was alive, he was a wicked man, greedy for money, and raped other people's wives and daughters. Now he is dead. And the things his wife brought with her, the married ones, the kidnapped ones, the kept men, and the thieves are all gone. It is often said that the retribution will be paid in 30 years, and now it has come. Others were talking about it. Let's talk about Aunt Ming sending her bride to the county government office, laying out the bed and curtains, and inviting her to sit at the banquet. Li Yane rewarded Zhu Sour and Tao Mama with five tails of silver each, a bonus, and sent them out. In the evening, the two got married and enjoyed the love and happiness of Yu Fei. The next day, Wu Yunyang served tea and finished the meal. Miss Young was dead, and Aunt Mengda. Aunt Mengda all served tea to the county. The Yemen sent a letter to invite all the relatives and their wives to a three-day feast. They were all musicians and prostitutes from the three courtyards, playing drums and performing operas. Wu Yunyang also had pearls and jade on her head, wearing a red gown with long sleeves, a flowery skirt, and a golden belt. She came to the Yemen in a sedan chair and entered the backyard. She was quiet and no one was there to greet her. She remembered that when Simon King was alive, the sisters were so lively. When they went to other people's banquets or came home, they all came to meet and talk. There was not enough space for one bench. Now there is no one. She threw herself on Simon King's coffin and burst into tears. After crying for a while, she was stopped by the maid Xiao Yu. It is just like this. No one knows my life's thoughts, only the bright moon through the window knows. Yu Nyang's depression is not mentioned here. Li Yane and Yu Lu, the two, are beautiful and talented, like fish and water. Just like a perfect match. Every day, they are like newlyweds, staying together in the room, never leaving. Looking at Yu Lu's appearance, the more I looked at her, the more I loved her. I also saw that she brought the maids with her, one Lang Shang, 18 years old who could play and sing, the other shallow and 15 years old, both of them were pretty. I was so happy that I could not even touch my feet. There is a poem to prove it. The beauty of the girl and the talent of the boy are worthy of praise, and the marriage is made in heaven. The twelve Wushans meet in the rain and clouds, and the two are willing to stay together for a hundred years. It turned out that the previous wife had lost a maid in the Yemen's room, about 30 years old, named Yu Zonor. She only applied rouge and powder, and became a demon. She had a bun on her head, which she covered with her hands, and tied a golden hoop round it, pretending to be a bun. She wore a set of strange green and red skirt and jacket, and four whole velvet shoes with double-breasted boats on her feet, about two feet long. In front of the people, she waved her head and pretended to take the class. Before the Lord married Yulu, she would serve him every day, and would be attentive to him. She would force herself to talk and smile, and she was so energetic. After marrying Yulu, she saw that the Lord and her were in love, and she would be angry if she was not picked. One day, the Lord was reading in the study, 
and Eugener prepared a cup of good nut tea in the kitchen and brought it to the study with both hands on a tray. She smiled and lifted the curtain to give it to the Lord. Unexpectedly, the Lord fell asleep after reading a book and lying on the desk. Eugen cried out, Dad, who loves you as much as I do, I have prepared this cup of delicious tea for you. Your newly married wife is still sleeping soundly in bed. Why don't you ask her eldest sister to bring you a cup of tea? Seeing that the Yemenir was dozing off, she kept calling out to him, but he didn't respond. So she said, Old beggar, are you tired from working at night? You are dozing off in the broad daylight. Get up and have some tea. When the Yemenir woke up and saw that it was him, he shouted, You ugly servant, put down the tea and get out of my way. Eugen blushed and threw the tea on the table in a bad mood. She came out and said, You don't know how to respect others. I meant well and brought you a cup of tea so early in the morning, but you asked me to get up. As the saying goes, ugliness is a treasure in the family, but happiness brings troubles. I am ugly, and you were blind in the beginning. Who asked you to ask me to come? The Yamanir heard it and kicked her twice with his boots. Eugenia immediately raised her slave face to a height of a roof beam and stopped applying makeup and drinking tea. She chased Yulu, but she didn't call her mother. She just said you and me. When there was no one around, she sat down on Yulu's bed. Yulu ignored him. He suppressed Langsheng and Shaoluan behind her back and said, Don't chase me to call you sister. Just call me aunt. Your mother and I are the elder and the younger. He also said, Just call me that behind my back. Not in front of your father. You follow me every day and work hard. If you don't listen to me, I'll take the coal shovel and ask you. Afterwards, when he saw that the Yemen ignored him a few times, he became lazy and slept until the sun was half up and didn't get up, nor did he cook or sweep the floor. Yulu told Langsheng and Shaoluan, don't rely on Yujin, you to go to the kitchen and cook for your father. Yujin was furious and angry. She beat Shaoluan in the kitchen and scolded Langsheng, you little slave. You little whore, there is a first come first served rule for the mortar. Did your mother come first? Or did I? You do have it all, so you don't have to be so diligent. When my mother died, she never called me Eugen. You have been calling me by my name for a few days since you came in. What's wrong with me being your servant? When you didn't come, I slept in the same bed with my father. I didn't get up until the fasting time that day. You and I are like sugar mix with honey. Honey is churned like butter. I have never been involved in matters of the bedroom. Since you came, you broke my honeypot and my marriage. You chased me to my bedroom, where I sit in a lonely bench and work in the official shop. I can no longer taste the taste of my father's thing. I am so angry but I have no one to complain to. When you were in Simon King's house, you were also the third concubine. Your nickname was Yulu. Do you dare to say that I don't know? You came to my house and you know me. We are just a little bit different. How can you wait for Kiao Zhangxi, calling Zhang and Li? Who did you buy? Who is under your jurisdiction? I don't know that Yulu heard it in the room and was so angry that she fainted, but she couldn't tell the Yane. It was a hot day, and it was time for something to happen. In the evening, the Yane asked him to get hot water from the kitchen and bring a bathtub to the room to take a bath with Yulu. Yulu said, please give Lang Sheng the hot water. Don't use her. Yanni refused and said, I will use her. Don't get used to this slave. Seeing Yanni asking for water, Eugener was angry when he saw Yanni asking for water and bathing with the woman in the orchid bath, imitating the pleasure of love. She took the bathtub into the room, put it on the ground, poured a pot of boiling water in it, and muttered, I have never seen this whore, so cunning and weird. And she has hurt me. She is just a slutty bitch for no reason and she doesn't go without water for three days. For example, when I sleep with my master, I don't have any water for a month, and I don't see any Buddha's eyes, but this whore will do it again and again. I'm a bitch. She cursed and ran out of the room. Yulu heard it, but didn't say anything. Yane was furious when he heard this, and couldn't take a bath. He slipped on his shoes, took a crutch from the bedside, and was about to walk out. The woman stopped him and said, let him scold you. You are so irritating. I am afraid that if you get hot and go out, the wind will test you, which is more worth it. The Yamane could not hold it back and said, Don't bother, this servant is rude. He stepped forward and grabbed his hair, dragged him to the ground, and swung his crutches, 
raindrops hitting him. Rao Yulu persuaded her and also beat him 20 or 30 times. The girl was so angry that she knelt on the ground and said, Dad, don't beat me. I think you don't like me at home anymore. I'd rather sell me. The Yamane was also angry and beat him a few more times. Yulu persuaded her, since he wants to go out, you don't have to beat him, so you won't be angry. The Yamane and his attendant immediately called Tao Mama to take the jade hairpin out and sell it for silver. It's just like, mosquitoes are beaten by fans because they hurt people with their mouths. There is a poem to prove it. People are happy when hundreds of birds cry. But what about the crows? Those who see it talk a lot, and those who hear it spit on it. It's just because they talk too much in front of people. Alright, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.